Hello and welcome to your chapter 6 video lecture. At the end of this chapter there will not be exercises or discussion questions. That will happen at the end of chapter 7. Remember this week we have two video lecture chapters, chapter 6 and 7, in order to catch up. Remember we only have five classes together. So with this particular chapter, which is going to be all about product and developing product strategies. At the end, there will not be exercises or discussion questions. However, I do want to point out that at the end of this video lecture, I will let you know of the concepts that will be covered on the upcoming quiz this coming Monday. So make sure at the end of the lecture, when I'm done lecturing and the slides are all done, you do wait because I will be back in video format and letting you know what's going to be on the upcoming quiz. So with that, let's get started on Chapter 6. Chapter 6 is all about creating product solutions. Some of the information that we've talked about, uh, some of the information in this chapter we've already talked about. Uh, things like selling a solution versus selling a product. Most people don't want a product, they want a solution. People don't want a roof, as we practiced the other night. They want to f make sure that uh, their house isn't leaking. So the main focus in this particular chapter is all about creating product solutions versus creating a product strategy. We also explore feature versus benefit, which we talked about a lot the first night we were together in this particular chapter. So getting started here, a product can be anything. Now remember, a product is the one of the four P's of the marketing mix. You have product, price, promotion, and place or distribution strategy. Really, a product can be information. It can be services, it can be an idea, it could be a patent, it could be tangible, intangible, it could be basically just about anything. And Think about when you buy something. Think about when you're out there shopping. You're not looking for some boots. You're looking for something that is durable and looks good. You're not looking for clothes. You're looking for a particular look or a solution. It's the same thing with any other product. We've got to create value. And when we talked about last night, we talked about uh, adding value through relationship selling. Well, it's the same thing. A product strategy or a, a product not only includes the product itself, but also the support or the service that goes along with it. Think about it. A cell phone is no good unless you have cell phone coverage like Verizon or uh, AT&T or something like that. Other than that, a cell phone is useless. So when you think about your cell phone, you think about the product, but really the solution is to keep in touch with the outside world. And that solution not only includes the particular product, that solution includes all the services that go with it. So oftentimes when you're selling a product or when you're selling a solution, not only are you selling the tangible good, but you're selling the, the support, the service, and all the other things that go along with that, the warranty, the guarantee, and things like that. So product strategy really is a plan that emphasizes becoming a product expert, including all the intangibles to tangibles, etc. We're selling benefits. We're not selling features. We're selling solutions. We're not selling the product. We're selling what the product can do for the buyer or for the customer or for the prospect. And that's what is really key when you take a look at this particular chapter. That's what this chapter is all about. So we've talked about personal selling philosophy, adapting a marketing concept and uh, personal value selling in previous chapters. The last chapter we talked about developing a relationship strategy, which is maintaining high ethical standards, uh, product relationship, etc. So the next two chapters, chapter six, which we're on right now, and chapter seven is all about developing a product strategy, becoming a product expert. Becoming a subject matter expect, expert, excuse me, giving the customer what they want, giving the customer a solution to their particular product. Remember, when we talk about selling and what we've talked about throughout the entire semester so far is we've talked about need selling. We're using a spin selling approach from Neil Rackham, who started spin selling. We're using a spin selling approach 
But a spin selling is all about using the S, the P, the I, and the N to uncover the needs of the prospect. Once we uncover the needs of the prospect, then we present a product solution. That product solution includes a, the warranty. It includes all of the other things that go with the product. So the first part of selling is uncovering the needs. We practiced that last night. We practiced that at different times, trying to uncover needs of the buyer, questioning to uncover needs. Now we're looking at a product strategy, which is the solution to those needs of the customer. And that's what we tried to get at last night when we were selling roofing and when we were selling siding, etc. No one wants a roof. They want their house to be warm and dry. No one wants siding. They want their house to look good and they want their house to be protected from the elements. That's the solution that you're selling. We need to bear that in mind as we move forward throughout the semester. So a solution is a mutually shared answer to a recognized product or problem, excuse me. A solution is more than product specific. We talked about that. It's answering the needs of the buyer. Uh, you can see in the tombstone down there, and uh, it, I read, selling a sol solution versus selling a specific product requires a greater effort to define and diagnose the customer problem. We do that through spin selling. We diagnose the customer problem through understanding the customer's needs. In order to sell a solution, you need to uncover needs. So it all works together. Once you uncover a need, once you can present a solution to that need, closing is easy. The, pri the, the, the prospect or the buyer or the customer would be insane not to take on your product. Yes, there might be some objections, and we'll be talking about handling objections later. But if you take a look at it, if you uncover the right needs and then fix the right solution to that right need, then the rest is easy. It's all about understanding that need and understanding the solution to that need. So solution selling is a process. It's not just coming in and verbally vomiting out features and benefits of a product or features of a product. If you do that, then how do you know what the benefit is? Neil Rackham one time said, and Neil Rackham again was the author of Spin Selling. They said, a benefit's not a benefit unless it's a benefit to the customer. For instance, a benefit might be um, it looks good. Well, I might not care about the aesthetic value of the particular product. I care about the durability and the warranty of the product. So to me, the benefit of aesthetically pleasing is not a benefit. So until you cover those, uncover those needs, until you use spin, the situation, implication, needs, payoff, all of those types of things, until you uncover the needs through spin selling, you don't know what the benefit is. You don't know what the solution is because you don't know what the problem is. So during the solution sales process, a, a person uncovers and care, clarifies the customer's problem or need then works with that customer by questioning, by presenting, by understanding their needs, a solution to that, and then closes the solution, giving a good price quote, a quick price quote, etc., and then handling any objections that the customer has. We haven't talked about objections yet. There's a lot of things that we need to do to talk about objections, but, but in particular, Every, every sale, there's going to be objections. Your price is too high. I want it tomorrow. It's not the right color. Something like that. We're going to talk about handling objections later on in the particular uh, semester. But right now, suffice it to say, if in fact you uncover that need, in, in fact, if you have used relationship selling, have a relationship with that buyer, with that customer, and then present a solution to the problem, not a product, but a solution to the product, then you're doing much better. It's easier to handle any type of objections that might come up and those types of things. So product strategy should be tailored to the customer. 
I've said it before. It can be transactional. In other words, it doesn't have to be product related. It can be a service. It can be something transactional. It can be consultative. You can cons sell not only a product, but also a way to implement the product. I used my brother as uh, an a, uh, example last night in selling. My brother is a consultative salesperson. He sells plastic beads. There's a ton of plastic beads out there. Plastic beads are a commodity. You have different types of beads, but they are a commodity. Where he adds value, where he does solution selling is not only will he sell the beads, but he'll also make sure that the, the, the beads and the plastic fit the product that these people are supposed to develop. So he comes in and he consults with them to make sure that they can run the product smoothly, run the product well, run the product on the first run, thereby saving money. So now the reason that he sells more plastic beads than anybody else and the reason he's successful of it is not the product. Plastic is plastic. It's a petroleum byproduct. What he brings to the table is that consultative selling to show them how it works. That is part of his solution. That's part of what he sells. That's part of his relationship selling. So he sells a customized solution. He sells something that's going to fit the needs of the buyer and becomes that strategic alliance partner. When you can do that, when you can establish a relationship, establish a relationship built on trust and strong, high ethics, and then add a solution to the problem, including service, including the product itself, including warranty, etc. At that point in time, you've won. That is when you have a consultative relationship selling process with the buyer and that's when the buyer calls you first. I talked about my relationship last night with the book rep or the textbook rep. He doesn't sell a textbook. He sells a solution. I have a problem. I have a new class that I'm starting up. I've never taught this class before. I'm looking for a book that does this. He provides that book for me or provides a series of books that can do that and then consults on which one might fit my need better. That's why I looked to that particular book rep first. We've established that relationship. It's a good trusting relationship. And now I go to him first. So product configurations oftentimes solve complex buying needs custom fitted solutions. Usually it's not maybe one product, but it's a series of products. It's a series of steps to go through the product. If you think about it, if you think about it, a product strategy includes all, all of the particular for product marketing mix. So it would be promotion, how you're going to promote the product. It would be the price because the product pricing is part of your product solution. Obviously, if you're going to add value, you're going to price yourself maybe higher than in the marketplace. Again, going back to my brother, because it's a very good example of how he adds value to his product solution, his plastic beads are higher than somebody else's plastic beads. But what he can do is he can consult, add value that way. So in the long run, because they can run it right on the first run, they can save labor, they can save time, etc. Even though the material is a little bit higher, his solution is less expensive. So pricing comes into that entire solution. So a major part of the product configuration is not only the product, not only the warranty and the service and all the ancillary things going about the product, but the price and also the delivery method how you're going to get it. Think about it. Oftentimes we'll buy online versus going to a particular store. Why? Because it can get delivered right to our doorway, right to our doorstep. Yes, we might have to pay more in shipping, but it's the value of having it delivered right to our door. It's the value of being able to click and get all of the different products and pricing at our fingertips 
is why we shop online. Sometimes because you add the tax and you, you add the shipping, shopping online is more expensive. But it's part of that whole product solution, including the distribution and how you're going to get it there. So don't think about product as just being the product. It's the entire marketing mix that goes along with it. So a very important part of the sales process is quotation management or getting a quote to a customer or prospect or buyer as soon as possible. That quote should not only uh, contain the price of the product, but all the other value added things that the product or the solution can provide to you, including distribution, including all of the things that we've talked about previously in this module. So preparing the written proposal, written proposal really oftentimes will include five parts, the budget or the actual price and overview. Generally speaking, it's good to start with a price, get it right up front, and then in the objective strategy, schedule, and rationale, you can justify the price. Oftentimes, written proposals should be very glib, short, to the point, and, and uh, so that a prospect can really understand what you're trying to say in as few words as possible and as easy to understand as possible. Remember, oftentimes a prospect is not going to go searching for the answer. You've got to put the answer right there in front of him or her in order for her to find it quickly so that she can understand what you're trying to do and understand all of the different things about your proposal. Effective sales letter writing, I think that this uh, really should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. They're not texts. Um, it's not millennial speak, as, as it were. It should be proper punctuation, proper English, proper words, etc. Use graphics to make a point. Don't use graphics just to make it pretty. Um, the visual format should be pleasing and a glint. And again, effective sales letter writing or memo writing should be glib, it should be to the point, it should be short, and it should be sweet. And that's part of a good proposal. Oftentimes, with a good proposal, there's a cover letter, and that cover letter will explain what's in the proposal. Oftentimes, that's in bulleted format, and in the cover letter, letter it also explains the price and then they can look up the rest of the stuff in the bulk of the proposal if they need be. So <clears throat> we've talked about the solution. We've talked about getting the needs and getting the solution for the prospect. We've talked about a good proposal, good quotation management, which means getting a proposal to a prospect in a timely fashion that is correct, short, and to the point. The other thing that salespeople need to be is become an SME, subject matter expert. Sometimes they call it a product expert. I tend to call it an SME or a subject matter expert. A subject matter expert is a person that knows not only all about their product, but also about the customer's business and what the solution of their product is for. That means to be an SME, not only do you need to know what your product involves, the features and benefits, but the solution it brings all the value add that it brings to the customer, all of the different things that the customer might desire from your product to, in order to so solve a problem that that customer or that prospect might have. The other thing is becoming an SME, subject matter expert, means you need to understand your competition. You need to understand your competitive pricing. You need to understand the features and the benefits of your competitive product your competitor's product, and you also need to understand the drawbacks and the objections that you're going to find within your product, and also the drawbacks and the objections that you're going to find with your competitor's product. All of that makes you, the salesperson, makes you, the account rep, or whatever you want to call yourself, the subject matter expert. So, being an SME goes way beyond becoming a product expert. Becoming a product expert is just one part of becoming the SME. Customers will seek out product experts, but more importantly, they'll seek out SMEs. 
So product information categories include quality, it include product development, it can include data, specifications, all the other things that's to your product. But more importantly, remember, you're not selling a product. You're selling a solution to a customer's problem. And once you understand that, once you understand that there you have a solution to a customer's problem, then you become not the salesperson, but more the relationship seller, the consultative selling, etc. All of that has to do with being an SME. Important in your SME is your price and delivery. Also important in being an SME or subject matter expert is your competitive price, your competitor's price and their delivery. You also have to have, be an expert on your company. They're looking for you to solve the problem. They're looking for information about your company. You need to make sure that they're, that you can portray your customer in a very ethical manner. People want to do with, uh, business with an ethical company. You need to understand about your customer sustainability pro, um, uh, procedures. You need to understand about how your customer stands on different, your, company stands on different issues, all of the different good your company's doing, all the PR that your company's doing, and that type of thing. Again, buyers want to be able to fully trust not only the salesperson, but also the solution, the relationship, and the company that that salesperson represents. So becoming a company expert is very important. You need to understand your company culture, your organization, your support for your product, also your sustainability goals, all those different things within your company so that the cu customer, the prospect, the buyer, whatever you want to call her, she can understand and feel good about who she's buying from, why she's buying from it, and the entire package, including price, solution, product, delivery, all of those different things about your company. We talked about being an SME and being an SME, you've got to know your competition. You've got to understand what's good about your competitive product and you've got to understand what's bad about your competitive products. You've got to understand what's good about the competitive sales reps and what's bad about the competitive sales reps, including their service policy, their pricing, their delivery, all those types of things. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to bash your competitor. You would never do that within a salesperson. However, when you get an objection, such as your competitor's price is lower than yours, if you understand their competitor pricing, you understand all of the different things about your competitor's product, you can handle that objection by showing how you ha what you have over your competition in order to justify that higher price. That doesn't mean you're bashing your competition. You're just pointing out the things that you have that are benefits to you over your, over benefits to the customer over your competition. And therefore you can justify that higher price. It's all about handling objections when you come to the closing of sales. So understanding not only your product, but understanding all of your competitors products and the competitors products out there is very important. It's better emphasize the benefits of your product. Source of information, really you're going to get a lot of information from web. You're going to get a lot of information from, um, on your particular company from plant tours, internal sales and sales support members. You're going to get a lot of information though from, on your competitors from your best customers. Your best customers will tell you what's good and what's bad about the competition. And you can trust that they will tell you the right thing. Remember, they're already buying from you. So there's less risk about talking about your competitive products. When I was in sales, I found out mostly about my competitors from my current customers and my best customers. They'll tell you what was good. They'll tell you what's bad, especially if you have a good relation, if you have a good relationship with that customer or that particular prospect, they will be able to let you know what's good and what's bad about the com uh, about the competition. Again, being an SME, a subject matter expert, includes not only you, but includes your company, it includes your product, it includes all the value adds to your product, and it also includes your competition. 
All right, feature benefit strategy. We talked about a feature. A feature is simply a product attribute. Some people teach FAB, feature attribute benefit. I don't. I simply teach feature benefit simply because I think that the attribute is the same thing as a feature. A feature is what your product has. It's what your product contains. The product's blue. The product is this, it does that, etc. The benefit is how it solves your customer's problem. Your benefit is how it solves the customer's needs. And again, according to Neil Rackham, the author of Spin Selling, Neil Rackham says that a benefit isn't a benefit unless it solves a customer's needs. That's why need selling and spin selling is so important. You can understand what the needs are, what the product are, is you can then take the feature and translate that to the benefit to the problem, prospect or the customer that will satisfy that particular need. The last two slides here are all about the feature benefit worksheet. Oftentimes I have um, students do a feature benefit. That feature benefit would be um, what the feature is and then what the resounding or the resulting benefit is. Remember with a feature and benefit, and you can see it on the next slide, I always say, and that's good because, or and which will do this. So you say a feature, you say, and that's good because. Or you say a feature and you say, which will do this, etc., etc. That's how you translate a feature to a benefit. Remember, though, you're not presenting features and benefits until you uncover needs. Selling is a process. The first thing you do is uncover needs and problems. Why are you there? Why are you talking to this particular prospect? They wouldn't have called you in if they didn't have a problem, if they didn't have a need. They wouldn't waste their time seeing you unless they had a problem or unless they had a need. So therefore, the first thing you do is uncover the needs. The second thing you do is be an SME for your product and all the value add, etc., on your product. And then as you present your value added solution, you use features and you use benefits once you get commitment or con confirmation with the features and benefits, you handle any objection and then you ask for the order. Most people have tough times asking for the order and, and you could tell that from last night because I asked that question. Um, and we are going to talk about closing and closing strategies a little later in the semester. That's going to do it for this particular chapter. Stay tuned and I will be back and letting you know the concepts that are on the next midterm exam or the next quiz which is coming up next Monday. Thank you. And I'm back. I want to talk to you about some of the concepts that are on the upcoming quiz. Um, again, these concepts are not all inclusive. Make sure you study mostly the slides. Take a lot of the uh, quiz questions from the slides, but you also have to understand the book too. So <clears throat> understand opportunity selling. Understand the concepts of value added selling. Um, understand communication style bias and how to minimize communication style bias. Understand the definition of a product and all of the things that come and are involved in uh, a product. Not just the tangible things, but all the different things. Understand product differentiation. Understand all the different concepts of or the components of the proposal, a pricing proposal that we talked about in Chapter 6 just now. Uh, understand the communication model. If you don't understand the communication model, look it up either on the internet or look it up on, in the book. It should be in the book. Um, understand service quality dimension. Uh, <clears throat> understand all the people that are involved in that relationship strategy. I showed a slide last night that was a bubble slide and it had the salesperson up here and then all of the different bubbles down there, including the customer, management, etc. Understand all those different people in that slide. Be able to memorize that slide if actually even draw it. Um, understand the four communication styles. Not the quadrants, but the four communication styles. That's that one slide that I showed you that make very good um, uh, last night that makes very good test questions. 
So understand that. Uh, understand product positioning and what's involved in product positioning. Understand self-concept versus emotional intelligence. Understand the definition of self-concept. Understand win-win and what goes into win-win. I showed a slide on that last night on win-win. Um, understand nonverbal communication. I showed a couple slides on that last night, nonverbal communication. And then finally, that four quadrant uh, that I talked about last night, the last um, really few slides that I talked about, um, and showed the four quadrant with the horizontal axis and then the, and then the vertical axis. Understand those four quadrants of communication style. With that, I will sign off for this particular mod module. I will send you another link for Chapter 7 when we're done.